In the last video in the series, we learned about Laravel's routing system. And now building on that, I want to turn our attention to controllers. To understand the role of controllers, let's go back to our web routes file and observe that so far, all of the code we've written for this application has been in this single file. And for this basic example, that hasn't been a big deal, but imagine this application evolving where instead of just two routes, we have 25 routes. And within those routes, we're doing complex things like querying the database, uh, writing to log files, uh, communicating with outside APIs, all the things we're gonna want our application to execute. If we had to write all the code for that in this single file, that would quickly become overwhelming. So anticipating that, what we wanna do is start to delegate what needs to happen in our routes to separate files where we can organize things logically. For example, because I'm building this hypothetical e-commerce store that's built around products, it would make sense if I had a single class that was dedicated to handling all of our requests as they relate to products. And this is where controllers come in. Controllers are just what we call these special PHP classes in our Laravel application, where we're gonna be writing the logic that we're gonna be invoking from our routes. To see what I mean, let's create our first controller for our products. And the way I'm gonna create it, I'm gonna actually go over to command line. You can see I'm currently in my application directory. And inside of here, I'm gonna invoke a command PHP artisan. Artisan is a command line utility that comes with every Laravel application. And if we invoke it, you can see it includes a bunch of utilities and helpers that are gonna come in handy uh, in the process of developing your application. And right now I'm scrolling up because I wanna look at these series of make commands. Specifically, we wanna use the make controller command. This is gonna generate a new controller class for us. So let's apply that. I'm gonna follow that command with the name of the controller I wanna create. And because I am basing this around products, I'm gonna call it products controller. Now it's not required that we end this file name with the keyword controller, but this is a common convention you're gonna see uh, in other Laravel applications throughout the documentation where your controller files always end with that controller keyword. So we're gonna follow that pattern. We're gonna hit enter and we see confirmation that our controller file was created. You can see it's gonna be located in our app HTTP controllers directory. And you can see by default, it gave it a .php extension, which makes sense, it's just a PHP class. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this up in our code editor. So again, that's in app HTTP controllers, and there's our products controller. So out of the box, this file doesn't look that special. It's a basic PHP class, but you'll notice that it's inheriting this base controller class which is also in your controller subdirectory. And then within there, that controller is extending or inheriting this base controller, which is in the core of the Laravel framework. There's some other inheritance going on here as well. So there's a lot of functionality actually packed into your controller classes uh, that as you get further into controllers, you'll take advantage of that. But for our purposes, we're just gonna start off real simple. All we're gonna do is create a method within here that is gonna handle what we need to happen when we wanna show products by category. Uh, and in fact, let's go ahead and grab all of the code that we previously had in the web routes. We're gonna move it over to our controller. So I'm gonna extract that out and then create a new method. I'll just call it show products by category. And I'll paste in the code I took from my routes file. And let's go ahead and collapse this array just so we can see everything that's going on in this method. So that looks good so far. Uh, we do have an issue with this category variable. I'll talk about that in a moment, but before we do that, now we wanna go back to our web routes file and alter our route. So rather than invoking this function, we want it to invoke that method that we just created in our products controller. And the way we're gonna do that is first at the very top of the file, we're gonna add a use statement that's gonna make that controller class available within this file. And then we're gonna delete this function we're gonna replace it with an array where the first element in the array is gonna reference that products controller. And the second element is gonna be the method we wanna invoke within that controller. In regards to the syntax for invoking the class, you'll notice I followed the name of the class with this double colon class keyword. The purpose of this is to return the class name as a string, including the full namespace. Uh, and this is just a pattern you're gonna see when invoking your controllers. It just adds flexibility if, say down the road, your classes move to a different namespace. You would only have to update that namespace at the top of the file where your use statement is, not down here where you're actually invoking it. Uh, that really gets into some semantics with classes and namespacing. If it's confusing at all, 
put a pin in that. You could always come back to that later. But for now, just follow the pattern I've shown here where you reference the controller class name and you follow it with that double colon class. And then, like I said, followed by the name of the method within that class that you want to invoke. So now that this route is set up to invoke our controller and the appropriate method, the last thing we need to do is make sure our route parameters are available to that method. And the way we're gonna do that is simply just add them as parameters to the method itself. So I'll set this up to receive a category variable, and then that will be used uh, in my code to filter my products and also be passed along to my view for displaying it as part of the heading. Let's test this out. Going back to the browser, I'm just gonna refresh my products page. And we see the same results as we were seeing previously because we didn't change any of the content. We just changed how it was programmed behind the scenes so that the logic is not happening in our routes file anymore. It's now delegated to that controller method. And with that, that is controllers in a nutshell. Obviously, there's a lot more we could do with controllers. You can skim through the Laravel documentation to see all the functionality available there. But uh, we've captured the essence of the point of controllers in this video. And in the next video, we're gonna take a closer look at our view files that we've set up where we're returning our HTML content. I wanna talk specifically about the blade templating language that we can use within those files.